Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandora Gaming, and I bring you guys my Amazement Deck Profile 2022 Pose Power of the Elements. Uh, this was a control deck that never was. Uh, for a long time, people thought Amazement was going to be the splashable engine in every trap deck, from Eldritch to Trap Trick to, well, let's face it all to guys. Uh, this deck had the potential for greatness, and it never popped off. Uh, Konami never printed a really amazing, amazing trap. Thus, this archetype kind of fell through. Uh, let me explain the amazements and see where they, uh, fucked up, how they can improve, and how Labyrinth is just the better predecessor to this archetype. Uh, the, the two, I would call it Amazement 2.0, as you were. So, first things first. The amazements is a trap archetype that works as a trap cards as equip spells. Uh, it's really weird to explain, but basically how it works is that their track cards either equipped to your monsters or equipped to your opponents to do effects. And um, depending on which one you equipped, depends on which effect you get. Uh, none of them are really amazing. We got some really interesting cards, but none of them are game-breakingly broken or game-breakingly strong that the deck never really made meta-relevancy. Uh, it's a very cool archetype. It's very splashable. Our Kino here is the main event himself, uh, and if they printed any, and I mean literally any good, la uh, what's it called, Amazement Trap card, this deck would have been splashed, and more than it was. Uh, it was tested for Trap Trick a little bit, but at the end of the day, it wasn't enough to creep into the meta. Uh, let me just explain Amazement as a whole right now. Uh, this is Amazement Administrator Arlequino. He is a three of. He is a gorgeous card, and you cannot stop me from saying that. Uh, this card is amazing. Uh, on the whole, again, he is the predecessor to the new Labyrinth card we're getting in Blackwing Blast. This card's amazing. Basically, uh, once a turn, you can banish any number of... Up, up. Alright, so I'm trying to say this card real quick. Sorry about that. Uh, attraction cards. Basically, this whole deck's theme around a theme park, and the attraction cards are like the bumper cars and the uh, roller coasters that the archetype uses in order to interact with the opponent. So it basically says, banish one of the appliance or trap cards, and then you get to uh, target as many cards your opponent controls, destroy them. So basically it says, banish cards from your grave to pop cards on the field. Which is really, really good. Non-targeting, great card. Uh, he also special summons himself when a trap is activated, which is amazing. The fact he can just get himself out of the hand is really, really strong. Uh, 2600 attack is not bad either. Um, and basically, he has the effect uh, where if a trap card is activated, yes, he special summons himself. But then you could target one card, your one monster your opponent controls, and equip an apply. Uh, I can't say this card. Attraction card from your deck to that monster your opponent controls. Which is really, really good. A very strong effect. Basically, he summons himself when you activate a trap, and then he immediately equips an amazement card to your opponent from the deck. He's a plus one, 2600, and he looked great as hell. Uh, what could go wrong? Well, the deck, again, doesn't have the greatest of traps, which we'll see. Uh, next, he had play three amazement attendant comica. Now, uh, this card is pretty interesting. Uh, I really like it. As a three of, I've seen some people cut this down to two, but I think as a three of, it's fine. Basically, in this card, it's normal summon. You can set an amazement a trap directly from the deck. And in quick effect, you can target one amazement trap, equip it to a monster, and equip it to an amazement monster you control. Or a face-up monster your opponent controls. He basically says, hey, you have an amazement trap, equip it to one of your opponent's monsters or your monsters to get effects. Very interesting archetype. Very cool. The deck has endless potential. It's just Konami... Hasn't printed the best trap cards. Uh, they're decent trap cards, but nothing earth-shattering broken. That's why this deck has never really creeped in. That's uh, a really cool engine, but again, do you want to be playing bricky amazement cards? Uh, we'll see. Uh, next, we play one Delta. Uh, this card is interesting as hell. Basically, reveal one amazement trap in your hand, so summon this card from your hand, and then send one amazement trap from your hand or face up on the field's grave to set one from deck. Uh, really, really cool card, but in the end of the day, it means you have to be playing a whole bunch of amazement cards, which again, only really work if you control these guys. So, it's interesting cards, but it kind of has the Magical Musketeer issue where 
you don't want to see too many of the uh, the uh, traction traps, and you don't want to see too many of the monsters. Uh, for our last monster we play, it is two Amazement Administrator uh, Bufo, uh, the bear. Yeah, I think he's the one that uh, basically helps give out the balloons. Uh, as you can see, they're all uh, themed. Uh, she gives out the tickets. She uh, plays card games. She gives out the balloons, and he's the main freaking attraction. And uh, Amazement Bufo basically says, when this card is normal summon, target an Amazement Trap in your grave. And target one face of monster your opponent controls. Equip an amazement from the graveyard. Really, really good effect. Basically says, hey, you use one of your good trap cards? Well, use it again. Really good. And then it's a quick effect. You can target one amazement trap, equip it to a monster. It's just a quick effect to do that. Really strong effect. Uh, that's why it's a two of. It's not good if you don't have any amazement traps. But hey, it's still a decent card. And that is why it's a two of. That is it for the monsters. A very small monster lineup. Now we go on to the spells and traps. Again, I think this deck still has huge potential. I think it's very rogue as a cure build, but I think as an engine, it still has potential. We just need more support. Uh, we did get a support cord in Power the Elements, but I don't think it was enough. We'll get to it when we get to it. It's a trap card. We don't have that many spells, so it shouldn't take too long. Uh, next, we play three Amazement ticket Time Ticket. Uh, this card is also amazing. Uh, basically, it says pay 800 life points, and then you get to activate one of these effects, depending on whose turn it is. If it's your turn, you add an amazement card from deck to hand, basically saying I'm a Rota for all your traps and monsters. Really, really strong. Uh, if it's during your opponent's turn, you get to set a trap directly from the deck, and it can be activated this turn. Really, really good effect. So you want multiple of these in hand. Really, really good card. And uh, finally, for our Amazement uh, Quick Plays, we also play one Amazement uh, Special Show. Basically, it's a really cool dodge effect. It says, target one Amazement monster you control, bounce it back the hand, and then resummon it, basically. It's a cool one of that we play to dodge targeting cards. Really, really interesting. Uh, if you want, you can cut it and play the, th the field spell at three, which we'll get to right now. But I think it's a good one of. Uh, our last spell we play is the two field spell, um, Amazement Precious Park. As you can see, the artwork on all these cards are amazing. I love the aesthetic that they're all like from a theme park, and I love how they, all the cards look. I just wish they're a little bit stronger. Uh, everything right now you've seen has seemed like really good effects. Uh, equipping to your opponent's monsters, summoning from the hand. These deck has the potential. It's just their traps need to be stronger in the archetype itself. You can play all the generic traps you want, but if your in-archetype traps aren't strong enough, you're going to have a bad day. But uh, basically, Amazement Presses Park says, During your main phase, you can activate one attraction trap this turn that was set. Basically saying, hey, you're tr you can activate one of your traps you just set this turn. Really, really good. Helps you play into boards. Really good effect. And then during the end phase, you can send one attraction Trap card, equipped to a monster to grave, target a tra uh, amazing trap with a different name, and banish the one in grave to set it. Basically saying, hey, switch out your traps. Now you can keep doing it. If you already use one of your traps to gain a monster, you can just do it with a different trap now. Really good effect. And now we go on to the amazement traps themselves, which are very, very good. Uh, first things first, we have amazement horror house. Now this card used to be kind of expensive, not gonna lie. It's a very interesting card when it comes to the amazements, and it is like the basics of what this deck can do. So, Amazement Horror House basically says it has two effects, depending on what you do. Uh, this is equipped to a card. You target one effect monster, your opponent controls negates effects until the end of turn. And uh, you can also, your opponent changes the equipped monsters to face down defense position. So, it's Book of Moon and a negate, which is really, really good. This card is solid. Next, also, same with this next one. Uh, Amazement Appliancer Coaster. This card's also a really good set card. Uh, basically, it says, hey, target one spell and trap your phone controls. Uh, send both this card and that card to grave. Really good removal for Mystic Mine. Also, your opponent can't... Uh, uh, also, your opponent adds one Amazement Monster from your deck to your hand. And you send this card to grave. Uh, it's a really cool recursion card. It's basically our MST in a deck. Really, really interesting cards. Very, very powerful cards. MST is really good. 
And especially since it doesn't destroy, it descends, which is good. And this guy being either a Book of Moon or a Negate is also really strong. Uh, very good cards. This is part of our first wave of support. Uh, our next waves aren't so lucky. Uh, we will talk about the last three of, which we got in Power of the Elements, which is pretty decent. It is Amazement, Attraction, Thrill Train. You might have noticed this card in your bulk when you were pulling Power of the Elements sets, but it has a decent effect. Basically, you can target one amazing monster you control or face a part monster your opponent controls. That's what they all say. And then you can basically do the each effect. Either if it's your monster, you change the equipped monster's battle position. Then your opponent chooses one uh, maze track in your grave, set it to your field, which is cool. Uh, it doesn't get activated this turn, but whatever. It's still a cool recursion card. And then if you equip it to your opponent, your opponent banishes the equipped monster to the end phase. So it basically has a really cool Farfa effect. Uh, interesting card, but again, when it comes to removal, we have two decent ones. A Negate and a Farfa Banish, which it returns, which I wish it just said Banish permanently, but what can you do? Uh, that is it for our three ofs, now we go on to our one ofs. And when you get to the one ofs, this is going to show why this archetype is a little lackluster. As cool as the main deck monsters are, as cool as the spell and traps are, and as cool as these three traps are, and even though Amazement Attraction Fill Train is okay, these next ones are a little a little not so great. So we'll just go in all order because they're all one ofs. Uh, let's just pull them all out. These four right here. Uh, these are all iffies. Uh, we have, of course, a roller coaster, our horror house, our train, and now we have our slot machine for the family, a uh, Viking ship. The carousel and the go-karts. Uh, we'll start with go-karts and then work our way there. So the go-kart one is interesting. This is target one card your opponent controls. Change the equipped monster to the battle position. If you do, shuffle the target into the deck. Uh, decent card. And then it also says your opponent increase the level of to one until the end of the turn. Basically saying, hey, I can change your level, which is all right. But uh, overall, it's not the greatest effect. It's, it's still decent. Uh, again, uh, depending on which effect you do, it can be really, really good. Uh, I wish it was the other way around, honestly. I wish you can bounce your, shuffle one monster you can pull in controls into the deck. Instead of just changing your level, increasing it by one until the end of the turn. That does come up against like XYZs, but against a fusion deck, that ain't going to do nothing. Uh, next we have Amazement, Attraction, uh, Majestic's Merry-Go-Round. I'm just trying to make sure I'm reading them all correctly. And basically, it has two effects. The first effect is always going to be the effect they apply to yourself. Uh, if you equip a monster, it gains 5 in attack. And if it would be destroyed by battle of card effects, it does not. Or it basically says you send this card to grave instead. I mean, if it's good to your opponent, your opponent loses 500 attack. And uh, that's about it. Uh, it loses 500. As you can see, that's a little lackluster in effect. This changes level to 1. This one loses 500. If this one just said, hey, I'm shuffling you back in the deck, this would be a mandatory three of. This card would be amazing. But if I just says, hey, your opponent increases the equipped monster's level by one until the end of the turn, also change its battle position, that is not enough in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. And this one just saying lose 500 attack is not enough in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, next, we have the Viking ship that basically says, hey, uh, if you equip to your monster, once we turn your opponent's monster... Uh, when an opponent monster declares attack, negate the attack, and we do change his battle position. Cool. And then if this one says, when your opponent, uh, if it's equipped to your opponent, your opponent equipped with this card. Uh, I'm, I'm not can't read correctly. Basically it says, hey, when equipped, monster activates effects, return it to hand. So it's compulse only when they activate an effect. Cool. Um, they're probably just going to link it off. Um. It's, it's a decent one of because it is technically compulsed, but I'd rather it be negated and they just did not use their effect. Why do they have to get their effect off and then you compulse them? You know what I mean? I mean that, that's okay, but again, we have it's not the greatest trap. And finally, our final amazement trap, amazement family faces, basically says, hey, target one monster your opponent controls, equipped with an amazement trap, Equip this card to it, and then while this card is equipped to that monster, take control of it. Which is really interesting, but you know the issue with this card is? It requires that monster to already be equipped with one of your other amazement cards. 
And that's why it's okay. It's like a really bad crackdown. It means you have to waste two cards to steal a monster. Which, in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, that's not enough. Uh, again, these were these four, if they were just fixed a little bit. Even, even the Farfoot one could be fixed a little bit. If these four were just a little better, this deck would be seeing playability. Uh, luckily, the archetype that basically is 2.0 of this, Labyrinth, kind of fixes that. If you haven't noticed, Labyrinth is basically Harlequino, but better. And they just play generic traps. Yeah, their traps in the archetype aren't great besides Fairlow Ravlin. But that doesn't matter because, hey, we can just play all the generic traps and be fine. Because all these archetypes average ass trap cards aren't that great, it does it it kind of lowers the deck, you know what I mean? Uh I wish the deck was stronger. I wish we just got better trap cards. Because the main deck is amazing. Like monster wise, Harlequino is amazing. These monsters are amazing. The spells are amazing. We just need better trap cards. These three are literally our best traps, and this is MST, a glorified MST. Uh, a negate or book of moon, which is this is the best one, and then Farfa effect. These four are average as fuck. And honestly, I might even cut them out. Just play these nine, and there's a whole bunch of our trap cards. Um, hopefully, Konami will give us another trap card. I didn't think this deck was gonna get any more support, and then they at least a common card in Power of the Elements. So I'm hoping this deck gets more support. Hopefully, they reveal another two cards like they've been doing in. Uh, Photon Overblast, what they did for Evil Eye. And, and Generator. For... And, uh, yeah, that's it for the uh, main deck uh, trap cards. These ones right here. But we do have some other ones uh, because we have to be playing better traps. We can't rely on these four. Losing 500 attack is not enough in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Especially when our main biggest monster caps out at 2,600. So we need better trap cards. And that is why we're playing... Titanicider, a really, really good card. Uh, if you don't know this channel by now, this and Lost Wind, which is also a three of in his deck, are probably my favorite trap cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. These cards are amazing. Not only are they negates for monsters, a special, a special summon monsters, but they have the monsters attack, and then just we keep resetting themselves. Really good effects. These are probably one of the best traps in Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm so happy. That they're really, really good cards. Uh, like I said, Lost Wind, great, powerful card. Halves the monster of a special summon monster. And then also negates its effects permanently. It's a permanent negate. And then if your opponent's special summon is a monster, you just reset it, banish it when it leaves the field. So you get double negates with this card, which is really, really good. Titanicider is even better. Basically says, hey, your opponent made a special summon monster, negate it. Make it its attack zero. But it only works on extra deck monsters. But it doesn't banish yourself. So you can constantly keep resetting it. Every time your opponent's post summons. Every turn. Stopping them from playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Very, very powerful effect. And I'm so happy these cards exist. We also play 3 Tormental Tribute. Because, again, we're saying playing such a low monster count. Most likely our monster, uh, they're going to commit more to monsters than we are. We just need to blow up their board. Really powerful effect. And finally, there can only be one. Because... We really don't want our opponent to play. And luckily enough, all our monsters are different. Besides these two right here that are machines, we have Beast and we have Psychic. So, Vare Can Only Be One is actually pretty strong in this deck. And uh, that is it for the main deck. I hope you all enjoy. The extra deck doesn't really matter because we're not really going into the extra deck. This is really a main deck focused archetype. Uh, who knows? Maybe one day it'll give us a fusion or a main deck monster that can go into a fusion. Or an XYZ or a Synchro, who knows? But in the end of the day, this is a really cool trap deck that just never got its time in the sun because Konami refused to give it any good trap cards besides Horror House and Coaster. And even Coaster is just glorified MST. And uh, Farfa's cool and all, but uh, as besides a YouTuber, it's not enough. And uh, anyway, I hope you all enjoy. Don't do anything stupid. Take care. See ya. Give us more amazement support, damn it. Bye. <laughs>